Welcome back, Physics 30. This is the last of the potential energy booklet. So we looked at what is gravitational potential energy, the law of conservation of mass. Now we'll look at total mechanical energy, which involves moving energy and stored energy, kinetic energy and gravitational energy. So if you look at various energy transformations that could happen, this is the key. Whenever we're lifting something, so we have all of these uh, areas here in which we have total energy, we'll assume that we don't have any energy lost due to heat or friction. So all that you'll ever have is kinetic and potential. And the key here is if you're lifting something up, it's going to be getting stored energy. The moving energy is going to be changing in the stored energy. So as you see here, at the very top, if I lift this brick up off the ground, and it's motionless here. It's not moving, so kinetic energy is zero. All of it is gravitational. If I let the brick go and it falls, at, when it just hits the bottom, it's going to be essentially at ground level. So the height is zero, so it has no stored energy. It's all moving energy just before it hits the ground. So 100% of the energy at the bottom is kinetic. And then, of course, anywhere in between there, it has a little bit of both. If I'm halfway up, we could think of it as having 50% kinetic, 50% gravitational. Other scenarios to look at. You could look, imagine a roller coaster. All of the energy you have on a roller coaster is from the very start when you're being lifted up to the highest point. And at that highest point, again, we're lifting up against gravity. It's not moving at that point, so all the energy is gravitational. So the total energy is gravitational energy. And then, of course, you start moving quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Then at the very bottom, you're at ground level, so your stored energy is zero, but you're moving really fast, so all your energy is kinetic. Then, of course, in between here, you have each kinetic and gravitational energy. A pendulum here, so connected to the ceiling or, or something that's um, higher up. Again, if we're lifting it up, all of the moving energy comes to a stop and we just have stored energy. If we let the pendulum fall, the stored energy gets to be less and less because it's approaching ground level until it hits the base level or ground level, whatever part that is and it's moving really fast so it's all kinetic and then in between of course we have kinetic and potential so those are the keys to the energy transformation we're for lifting something up gravitational energy is changing to kinetic and if we're letting something fall of course vice versa gravitational is changing back into kinetic okay so we'll take a look at some examples here 10 kilogram mass is released vertically from rest at a height of 60 meters. What's the work done in raising the mass up? So, of course, work done here is equal to change in energy. And in this case, we're lifting something up. So the change in energy that's happening there, of course, is gravitational. Okay, so we have a height of 60 meters. We know the mass, gravitational acceleration. So MGH... 10 times 9.8 times 60, so that works out to be 5,880 joules. What would the total mechanical energy of this object be? Since we know from earlier that lifting something up, where I this little bit question here, I have the key, lifting something up, all of the energy is gravitational. So if the, this crane or whatever it is is lifting something up, all of the energy is going to be equal to what it was at the start in terms of gravitational energy. So if it gained 5,880 joules of energy, that's what the total energy of it must be. Maybe put a star beside this question because you'll see this again, including the quiz. Okay, uh, what is the kinetic energy of the mass? We, of course, it's fallen down a little bit. So it's raised up 60. When it falls down 40 meters, what's its moving energy going to be? 
And of course, as you see here, if you fall 40 meters, that's actually 20 meters off of the ground. So that'll help us with gravitational. Because of course, in between the topmost part and the bottommost part, we have a little bit of each. We have some kinetic and some gravitational. So we know the total energy from earlier, 5880. Kinetic energy is what we're looking for. Gravitational energy at this spot, mgh. Mass times gravity times height. So we have 5880 is equal to EK plus 1960. So subtract 1960 from each side and we get the kinetic energy being 3920 joules. Okay. A swimming ball with a mass of 1200 kilograms is used to wreck a building. It is raised four meters vertically. When it's pulled to one side, calculate the following. And of course here I tried to make a poor Miley Cyrus joke in the wrecking ball. So we're pulling it up vertically here. Four meters vertically. So of course the, the work done is equal to the change in energy. And the type of energy that's changing here as we lift up this wrecking ball with Miley Cyrus on top, MGH. So mass times gravity times height, 47,040. And running off to two sig figs, 47,000 joules. The total energy of that ball, of course, just like before, the ball is not moving at this part here, so all of the energy must be equal to what I had in terms of gravitational energy. So it's not moving there, so I could say, oh, my kinetic energy is zero, so my E total is equal to EG, which is also 47,000 joules. So it didn't change because there's no kinetic energy at the top there. Okay, and then next here, what's the kinetic energy as the ball strikes the building? So just the opposite, the ball falls down to its lowest point, virtually ground level. So the gravitational energy is going to be zero. So all of its energy is kinetic. So total kinetic energy is equal to uh, the E total from earlier, 47,000 joules again. So all that energy I gained as it was being lifted up was potential energy and now it's changing to 100% kinetic energy. The work done by the building and stopping the ball so work done, change in energy, the change in energy of course is kinetic, so guess what, it's the same thing as well. All 47,000 joules is transferred to the wall. And then lastly here, the force exerted by the wall if the ball goes inside the wall 5 centimeters. So 5 centimeters of course is decimal 0, 0.5 meters. So the force exerted, now we know what the work done in stopping the ball is equal to the change in energy. So work done is 47,000. Force we can figure out. And the D here that we have, 0 0.05. So divided side by 0 0.05 and we get the force of 94,000 uh, newtons. Okay, and of course it's going to be negative work here. Because technically it's negative work and a negative force because we're working against the ball there. Okay, uh, next question. A, a child throws a 0.2 kg rock at a tree. When the rock leaves the kid's hand it's moving at 20 meters per second and is located 1.5 meters off the ground. Calculate the following. So I'll maybe leave you to see if you can figure this out and then we'll come back and see how you made out with the questions here. So just do it all in steps and then we'll come back and take a look at how you did.